One of these things is not like the other. Hello, welcome to Dangerous Policy, a channel aimed at intelligent people wanting to discuss important issues facing life and society. My name is Chris Byrne, and as we come out of the Tokyo Olympiad, there is an interesting anomaly in the medal tally that I want to discuss. Australia is a country of 25 million people. For most of the Olympics, we were coming in fourth after China, the United States and Japan. 20% of the world's population, world's largest economy, host of the games. We slipped back a bit at the end there, but if you were to combine Australia and New Zealand, which also performed really well, only 5 million people, combine that together, Australia, New Zealand, 30 million people, third in the Olympic medal tally. That is insane. Out of all proportion, to our economic size and our population. Why is that? Well, I do have an explanation and I've narrowed it down to five main reasons. Five reasons why Australia and New Zealand dominate at the global Olympic stage. Coming in at number five is the investment. Uh, the federal government, the state governments, they all have departments of sport, the Australian Institute of Sport, Major philanthropy as well, private sector, major businesses, individual billionaires, they pump fortunes into our various sporting codes, in particular the Olympics, which doesn't get funding from many other sources. So uh, if you're a rowing team or a beach volleyball team or a swimming team, you will have money raining across you from government and private sources uh, that many places in the world do not have. If you're a, you know, an elite athlete in some obscure sport, say you're a, a pistol shooter or something, and uh, you're from South America, well, getting funding and support might be really difficult. And half the challenge is having the time to train and to exercise and to perfect your craft because you're busy trying to raise money to get to the Olympic Games. We don't have that problem because of the emphasis placed on that success. Coming in at number four, is our education system. Many places around the world don't put a lot of emphasis on physical education. They you know, obviously focus on their maths and sciences and language and all of that sort of stuff. Australia has that too, but physical education is an embedded part of our education system across the board, same in New Zealand, from early childhood right through to when people leave school. Uh, emphasis is placed on sport, teamwork, physical activity that is also compounded in terms of after-school activities and then inter-school carnivals are a huge part of our you know social calendar as children uh, we, we compete with other schools in the pool in the track and field in the cross-country running so there's a lot of competition across different school groups but only in the sporting arena and then in terms of our extracurricular training well many parts of the world might focus you know appropriately on remedial maths or extra science whereas Australians very much focus on the sport if you're Saturday morning very likely your kid and your next door neighbor's kid they're out on the soccer field together that's just the way the Australian education system sort of works uh, then coming in at number three related to this is the outdoor culture this is true for Australia and New Zealand for the obvious natural gift we have a continental landmass, unmatched, stunning beauty. And in order to enjoy it, you have to go out there and see it. Uh, of course, in New Zealand, iconic landscapes, panoramas like, you know, showcased in Lord of the Rings. In order to fully embrace our wonders, you have to go out there, you, you know, hiking, uh, going well beyond where vehicles can't travel. That's very much part of the Australian, New Zealand kind of culture and psyche and thus that requires a certain degree of physical activity. Also our normal rituals, you know, the Great Australian Barbecue. Well, you don't have a barbecue indoors, you have it outdoors. So you might be at the beach playing a cricket game. You might have it in your backyard, in your swimming pool. Uh, but certainly physical activity is part and parcel of most Australian New Zealand social rituals. And thus even passively, not even thinking about it very much, we do tend to be quite physical. Then at number two 
And uh, this is sort of special for within Australia in, in New Zealand because we have um, something called tall poppy syndrome. So number two is emphasis on athletic achievement. Australia and New Zealand are very egalitarian societies, a great sense of fairness. You're not supposed to, to obviously big note yourself. If you're good at something, yeah, you're good at this, but other people are good at other things and you're supposed to be more humble about that sort of thing. So you don't um, you know, show off, so to speak, except in sport. Uh, our sporting masters, our great athletes, those that, that excel, win Olympic gold, they are our royalty. We treat them on a pedestal uh, and they are the great role models for children. They are hope to be not just great sporting um, you know, heroes, but also great people so that others can seek to emulate them. So when sporting figures let people down through their own personal conduct, we tend to judge them very harshly. Uh, that's because they have the weight of expectation of an entire country on their shoulders. They're thought to be the best of us. The emphasis on athletic achievement dominates all. It is far more important to the average Australian than you know, scientific discovery or music or what have you. And people can be resentful of that fact, but it just it just is. Um, and thus, uh, you know, the fact that that we would send the best of the best that we can to the Olympic Games is just part and parcel of the Australian culture and the New Zealand culture. Then at number one is the fact that Australians and New Zealanders are Poseidon's gift. We are born in the water. It wasn't until I was an adult that I met someone overseas that said that they couldn't swim. And when I heard that, like it was it was so alien to me. If you came to Australia or, or New Zealand and said that you couldn't swim, people would look at you as if you had a profound disability, as if you couldn't speak. Uh, because in Australia and New Zealand, from Early childhood, not even toddlers, you are thrown into the water and taught to swim. Uh, every single Australian New Zealander spends a significant portion of their, their time at the beach, even if they don't particularly like the beach. Uh, they all live within a short period of time from the beach. A lot of our cultural kind of activities are at the beach. Uh, and thus, we can all swim. We can swim in the swimming pool. Uh, we can all, you know, sort of row a boat. We can, we can do these kinds of things that many places in the world, they just don't do. They're landlocked countries or they don't have the same maritime culture. And the overwhelming majority of our Olympic medals, of which there are many, uh, come from water-related activities. You know, swimming, rowing, canoeing, sailing, uh, even those things that are not necessary in the water but done at the beach, like beach volleyball, we do those things really well. And that's why, you know, obviously surfing is a major iconic um, trait as well. So if you're in Australia or New Zealand, you have a, a significant advantage in, in the pool. And I've met many people who have come to Australia and said, look, you know, before I came to Australia, I thought I was a strong swimmer. But when I jump in the pool with everybody, like I'm just absolutely dominated. And I myself would not have thought myself a strong swimmer by Australian standards. I'm totally average. And yet when I go overseas and I jump in a swimming pool in some other part of the world, it's so obvious the, the gap between myself and most other people simply because I, like most Australians, have spent a lifetime in a pool. Uh, so that's uh, the top five reasons why Australia and New Zealand Despite the fact that we have very small populations in some distant part of the world, we have an overwhelmingly outsized performance in the sporting arena is mostly for those five reasons. If you have your own, please leave them down below. I might have missed some things as well. Uh, and none of this is a is exclusive, right? What are, things that I didn't say were, you know, our, our natural physicality or or our genetics or anything like that, because I don't believe that. I think, you know, Australians are very average sized people in terms of their kind of athleticism. Uh, it's just that we have this significant investment and that means other countries and other peoples would be able to emulate that success if they so chose. If you enjoyed this discussion, please hit the like button and subscribe. We talk about issues all the time and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much, goodbye.